Brown fish are a wide variety of fin fish that live at or near the bottom of the ocean. Hence, the name ground fish. The species include flatfish like halibut, turbot, petrolley sole and dover sole, ling cod, deeper water species such as black cod and thorny heads. In addition, many rockfish species also contribute to the fishery. Oregon fishermen use three different methods to harvest ground fish. Crawls, which are nets towed on the bottom of the seafloor. Baited pots that are lowered to the seafloor. And longline gear, which use baited hooks. The hook and line and pot fisheries which include dayboat fisheries, are important to the local economy. Dayboat fisheries provide a steady supply of high quality catch for local restaurants and fish markets. Ground fish species, especially rockfish and lingcod, are also harvested in the recreational fisheries carried out by charter boats and Oregonians who launch their boats into the ocean. Recreational fishermen make a huge contribution to the coast's heritage and economy. Let's focus on the trawl industry because they harvest most of the ground fish and they have taken major steps to become more sustainable. The trawl fleet in Oregon and on the west coast grew dramatically during the 1970s. Then in the early 1990s, scientists made important discoveries. Many ground fish species have long lifespans, take longer to reach sexual maturity, and have fewer offspring compared to many other marine species. That was a big wake-up call. The fishery management implications were clear. Ground fish fisheries on the West Coast had to restructure. But when was the big boom? Like the late 70s, early 80s? Yeah, yeah. yeah right around 80. And there was a lot of boats, a lot of Real trawl boats. Heavy catching power. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, if that would have continued, you bet there would have been problems, you know, in, in fish stocks. By 2000, ground fish harvests were cut by 50%. And trawl fishermen were prohibited from using roller gear. So, those fishermen had to avoid fishing in rocky habitats. Then in 2002, the Pacific Fishery Management Council implemented huge areas close to ground fish fishing. The closures later became known as the Rockfish Conservation Area, or RCA. When they looked at how bad things were and how long it would take to rebuild, and realize that the harvest rates on these fish was gonna to have to be very low, 2%, 3%, 4%. They felt like the best way to manage a comfort zone that that would indeed happen would be to close where most of the fish live. The rockfish conservation area stretches from Canada to Mexico on the coastal shelf, encompasses between five and 9,000 square miles for the trawl fishery, and over 16,000 square miles for the other fisheries the other sport and commercial fisheries. And again, that was done to give the council the comfort that there wasn't fishing going on virtually at all inside the heart of where these fish live. These measures, closed areas, and sharp reductions in the volume of harvest represent stunning changes in policy. The Rockfish Conservation Area, the RCA, is one of the largest marine protected areas in the world. And again, today, depending on the species, ground fish fishermen only harvest one sixth to one tenth of the volume they used to harvest. These conservation measures made a tremendous difference. The primary ground where those fish live, that live are protected. And it, it's, it's shown you know, through the stocks, uh, lingcod was a, a fish that came back incredibly fast. I think it was a 22, 24 year rebuilding cycle. 
these fish have come back to historical levels that uh, we haven't seen since I was a little kid. These days, fishermen do everything they can to keep bycatch to a minimum. We have to fish clean. If we don't fish clean, we're shut off. So we, tr we do everything we can to stay out of areas that would have uh, overflow of rockfish. You know, we can't catch them. We, I mean, we've, we've changed our location of fishing in the last five years. We don't want the, the chance of a lightning strike, you know, big bag of canaries and shut the whole coast down, you know. There's been a noticeable increase in abundance by the scientists who are out there looking. There's been even more of a noticeable increase by fishermen who are out there, who are not out there constrained to various scientifically designed transects, who just run around the ocean and take a look at things. They're not allowed to fish in the rockfish conservation area for rockfish, only on the peripheries. But in transiting there, if they open their electronics and take a look, they see a lot of fish. When they actually do fish on the periphery, they're all reporting significant abundance of the fish. And we, we really don't know what's in there, but I believe, and I think the rest of the fleet believes that the fish are waist deep. In the trawl sector, we, we've seen the declines, you know, but we're seeing the rebound. Back when I, uh, in the mid 90s, there was most definitely a decline in fish stocks. And now that my boys are running boats now, um, they, they didn't see the low end of things. All they're seeing is fish are pretty easy to catch right now. They really are. And in the trawl fishery, you know, 15 years ago, there was th close to 300 trawl boats fairly active in the fishery. And now there's l less than 100 on the whole coast. So um, this is all playing a role in the rebounds of our stocks. But as far as ocean conditions, it's phenomenal what we're seeing. There were so many fish down there that you just, you could feel them when you were dropping down to them, you could feel them hit it, but they're so full they didn't even eat. You get them up on the deck and they'd, you'd throw them, when you did get one, you'd throw them in the meat boxes and little fish were flopping all over the deck. Just, just uh, it, the ocean conditions is the, is the best I've seen it in 30 years. Well, as far as, as rockfish recovery, what we're seeing on the ocean right now is, is uh, actually incredible numbers. We, we have a couple of species that we try to avoid, and those species are coming back in numbers that are, that are hard to describe. The population is going to the point where I, I made comment the other day that I thought pretty soon they were going to start spawning on the beach because they were running out of areas to go because <laughs> they're really, really coming back strong. The commercial fishermen are a lot to thank for the way that they've changed their gear, especially on the shrimp trawls. They have uh, excluders that the uh, canary rockfish can go down in their net and swim right out the, the door in the back end of it. And uh, I know just from living here and fishing here for 40 years that the canary rockfish is, are every bit as thick as they were when I was a, a little kid, you know, fishing out here. So there were some problems for a while and uh, the management of uh, the shrimp shrimping industry and the commercial fishermen going together on it, they seem to solve the problem. And we're getting a lot of, like I say, there's canary rockfish everywhere. I suppose up in Garibaldi, you guys yeah. would probably say it's the same. What we've been noticing up north, up off the Garibaldi, all the way as far north as uh, Tillamook Head, is that the, the incidental catch up canary rockfish keeps, every year keeps creeping in just a little bit more. We're fishing spots that you wouldn't necessarily drop down and catch a canary rockfish, but now we're dropping in shallower areas and catching canary rockfish. And they, they just scratch my head and saying, you know, where can I go so that I can stay away from these fish that are, that were, you know, not supposed to be catching, that are supposed to be uh, very limited supply in. And Let's look at the changes to fishing gear that made such a big difference. One of the things that we first did back in 1990 was we went to a four and a half inch mesh size. And the object of that is so that any small fish that gets inside the net can go right through the net and swim free. This way juvenile fish or other species don't get back in the cod in. 
All we want to catch as fishermen are those species that we can sell and those that are commercial legal size. So the four and a half inch mesh size is a big step forward in good ocean management. This trawl came about starting in 2002. Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife biologists were looking at the inclination rate of rockfish as they came into a trawl and started realizing that if the trawl were modified, there might be a chance of actually letting rockfish out of the net while retaining the catch of the flatfish and black cod as the real money fish, and the fishermen just want to catch what they can sell. So in their studies, they came up with parameters for a new net design, and part of their parameters were they wanted a low rising net. And so at the very tip of the net is much lower than a normal net, and the rise is slower, so that the very center of the net here is less than half of what a normal net would rise to. And so that allows the rockfish to get out and the sole to be caught. The new nets performed better than expected. We would get these calls from fishermen at sea after the first couple toes. Just, We're catching just flats. I haven't caught any rockfish, and I'm deploying the net half the time that I used to, half the time that it's actually on the bottom. I'm saving four to five gallons of fuel an hour. I wish I had this net 35 years ago. And it, I think, really exhibits a collaborative process that is just, as you always say, win, win, win. But when good people get together on a project, good things happen. They're nice. She builds a very good net. I've never seen anything that fishes as clean as these nets. They all go right up over the top of the head rope and we don't get them. And I'm, I'm sure that's why we're so successful and not catching rock cod with them. I just consider it a real wonderful example of what the Oregon fishermen are doing, working with the scientists, working with the net shops, all of the experience that we have, bringing it to fore to solve some of these problems we incur.